In this video, I'm going to show you the solution to this problem, problem one, the start-finish line. It's part of uh, problem one of project 3.1.7, machine control design for the VEX. Uh, and yeah, here's the solution. So in digital port one, I, uh, I plug in a bump switch. In digital port two, I plug in a limit switch and digital port 12, I have a green LED. So the uh, bump switch will simulate a uh, pressing the start button on a stopwatch and that'll start your clock running. The limit switch will simulate uh, a ribbon across the finish line and when the runner breaks the ribbon it'll pull on the limit switch and uh, trigger the limit switch the green LED will just serve as an indicator that uh, the limit switch has been tripped. So you start out with, uh, I start out by setting up an integer, an, a variable integer t, and that's my timer. So my current time will be stored in a variable called t. And I do that before I start the main portion of my programming, and this is the, main, the program itself, task main. First step is to set up my while loop so that the program will run continuously while 1 equals 1. Um, 1 is always equal to 1, so it'll just run continuously in between the, the uh, two parentheses. So anything between here and anything between here and here will run continuously. Uh, this is my first statement in my program. It's a while statement. And uh, it says while the bump switch is not triggered, uh, zero, zero, zero designates that bu the bump switch has not been triggered. Um, while the bump switch is sitting idle, it drops down and does what's in, and the program does what's in these brackets, which, which is to turn the LED off. It makes sure that the LED is turned off. So as long as the bump, the bump switch is sitting there idle, It'll just continuously loop around here. It'll keep looping and looping and looping, and the green LED will be turned off. Now, once the bump switch is pressed, uh, it, be it becomes 1. And so bump switch is no longer equal to 0. It's equal to 1. So it'll drop through here, go to the next line. And uh, the next line, clear timer 1, it re that command line, that command uh, resets my timer it, and it turns it on. Then my program goes down to the next statement. It's a while loop. And it's, uh, it will look at the limit switch or the switch that's connected to my, my finish line ribbon. And if it is not triggered, if it's sitting idle, it's uh, equal to zero. And it'll do what's ever in these uh, curly brackets continuously. So what it's what this statement is saying is that t, my variable t, is equal to the to the current time. So if uh, one minute has elapsed, t is equal to one and so forth. And so it'll in this while statement will continue you continue to loop here, from here to here, from here up continuously until the limit switch is triggered. Once the limit switch is no longer zero, it becomes one, it'll drop through these curly brackets and go on to the next statement. And the next statement is it'll turn the LED on. And it'll wait for five seconds. And uh, then it'll return to the top and uh, start over again running this endless loop of turning, making sure that the LED is turned off. Now, I just want to point out that at, at which point time this while statement is running, T is continuously updated with the current time. But once it drops out of this loop, uh, the, the last reading of T of time is stored in this T. So what T holds is the uh, last reading before the, uh, the limits which was triggered and uh, the LED was turned on. So uh, that it, T will contain my elapsed time, the time it took the runner to, uh, to run the race and cross the finish line. 
So I'm going to compile my program. And then download it. And I have my debug uh, program debug menu. I'm going to go ahead and show my dialog box. Make sure that uh, this is uh, turned on, and you can see your uh, dialog box down here. And you notice that there, if you um, show your variables, the global variables here, click on this tab, you'll see T. And of course, T is the timer. And uh, currently, it's a value of zero. So you could track what the timer is. And you'll actually see how long it took the runner to cross the finish line. So this is how the program runs. I'm going to hit start. Uh, first of all, I'm going to hit clear all, just to make sure to clear everything out. Uh, turn off my LEDs, uh, clear everything. And now I'm going to hit start. And uh, my program is looping. I'm going to press the button, my push button. And you notice when I do, the timer starts and it's running. And now I'm going to hit my limit switch. And when I hit my limit switch, uh, there is the value of time. That's how long it took the runner to run the race. So I'm going to go ahead and start my program. And I'm going to uh, step through it. You notice that uh, the as I hit step, it's just looping here in this while statement. The bump switch is not pressed, and so it keeps looping. It'll loop endlessly until I press the bump switch. I press it, and it, once it recognizes that the bump switch has been pressed, it jumps down to the next line, and it resets my timer. And you notice that my timer is, is running, and it's waiting for the the a limit switch to be triggered or for the runner to cross the finish line. Notice I keep incrementing my timer. Now I'm going to press my limit switch. I turn the LED green on and the LED green, I turn it on and I wait for five seconds. And you notice the timer has stopped incrementing and the last reading of my timer, T, uh, was uh, this number here, uh, 22,392, uh, 22 seconds uh, before my limit switch was pressed. So that is the time it took for the runner to run the race.